Hey, hey everybody. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to get our Arduino all set up so that we could blink two LEDs back and forth. And this will be the first in a series of tutorials that will teach us all about the Arduino and how to do various tasks with it. And this series will assume no prior programming or electrical knowledge. So if you're in that area, uh, this would be a good place for you to start. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to learn a little bit about electricity and how it works. So the basics of electronic is just a circuit. You have your battery here and your light. And I want to get the power from this battery and into this light so that it will light up. And we have our positive and our negative or our ground. And in order to make this work, we need to get the positive out here and then back into the negative. So if I were to take a wire and just connect it in like that, drag this guy up, and then get this terminal and then put it back into negative, the power will go from here into the light bulb, light up the light bulb, and go back into the black, into the ground. If I simulate that, you could see my light lights up. Now, if I were to take away one of these wires, say I were to go like that, I still have this power going into here, but I don't have the power going back, so it's not gonna work. And we are gonna use this knowledge to start to work with our Arduino to do all sorts of things. Now, this kind of works here because this is a simulation on a computer, but if I had like these wires and these and this light and this battery, all that like with different stuff there, it would just get really annoying. So how can I connect these wires and these components together so that I could remove them? And that leads us to what we have here. And that's called a breadboard. And you can see my breadboard right here. Uh, this one is a little bigger. And this breadboard allows us to connect wires and components and remove wires and remove components very easily. So if you look at this, all of the holes in this row here, they, uh, they are all connected. So this one right here is connected to that, which is connected to that, which is connected to that, which is connected to that. B right there is not connected into this. It is not connected into that. Only the rows are connected with each other. Same way over here. All of these are connected with each other. These are not connected with each other. And this row right here is not connected with this row right here. Then you have these columns right here for the plus and the minus. All of these going down in the plus column, those are all connected. And in the minus, those are all connected right here. In this particular breadboard, these are all connected, this entire column. However, you will find some breadboards where the this top half of the column is not connected to this bottom half of the column, so you would need to connect them on your own. So using this bit of knowledge, I am going to add a couple more wires and complete that same circuit that I had before. So again, I always start with my positive. I need to edit this here. All right. Circuits.io is the name of this website. I find it very, very helpful to use. And it's a much cleaner look than having to take a look at all these wires and all that and everything. So it can get kind of frustrating. So start my positive, And I am just going to throw this positive into one of the rows here. Really doesn't matter. Now, if I connect something here, if I go there, these, this wire, these two wires are now connected. And I will take this terminal and I'll put it back into here. And now these things are all connected right here. If I go into there, boom. This is just the same as this. And if I were to start it up, it would light up. If I were to switch this, so like say this is like that, this would no longer work because these two are not connected to each um, are not connected to each other. So we have some lights, we have some batteries. Now let's actually get started with our Arduino. So you can see over here, I have set up my, uh, my Arduino. And what I wanna do right now is I just wanna get this LED, this light to just shine. So if you look at these batteries, these are nine volt batteries. And this right here is a five volt output. So I am going to connect it into my breadboard and it is connected into this thing, which is called a resistor. 
And if you imagine like you are really thirsty on a hot summer day and you want to get a drink from a garden hose. And so you get that garden hose all set up, but it's really a song. It just splashes your face all over the place. And it's just a horrible, embarrassing um, experience. What you would want to do is you would kind of want to squeeze that garden hose so that it's nice and steady. And that's what this resistor does. If we just connected this LED, this is different than the light bulb. If we just connected this LED into that five volts without the resistor, it'd just be like getting splashed in the face with all that water. We wouldn't want to do that. This kind of squeezes it and it makes it a nice steady stream in order for your LED to shine. Not too strong, not too weak, but nice in that Goldilocks zone of a nice and brightness. And so it goes through here and then it goes up the LED and then back into ground. Now, a couple things here. All resistors are not created equal. They have a different value of what is called ohms. And it would be like a really strong one. It would be squeezing that hose way too strongly and you wouldn't get any water. You would not be refreshed at all. And this light would not light up. If it is too weak, it would let too much throw. So this is a 330 ohm resistor. And you can read that by looking at the bands on your resistor and then using this table, it's, it's easy to Google this, and using this table in order to find that value. So this is green, which is a five, blue, which is a six, and then on these with only four bands, you have your multiplier. So that is yellow, which is we multiply it by 10K. So 56 times 10,000 is 560,000 or 560K. That would be way too strong for what we are using. You also have these blue ones, which are five band ones. So you have your red, which is two, orange, which is three, purple, which is seven. So 237 times the fourth one right there, which is times one. So that would just be 237 ohm. And we could verify this over on this resistor. We have the orange, which is three, orange, which is three, so 33. And then you have brown, which is a multiplier of 10. So 33 times 10 equals 330. And if you don't have an exact 330 ohm resistor, um, that's fine. You could play around with different values and it's pretty rough as to kind of how different you can go with this. So we go to through five volts into the breadboard, connects there through our resistor, and then up the anode of the LED. Uh, the LED cannot, like, it only works one way. So if I were to put this the other way, it would not work. And a good way to tell is that if you look at this LED, this end is longer than this end. Typically, the longer end is the one that you want to connect it into positive. So if I were to put that back into there, that works. If I were to switch it, nada. So make sure you have that connected the correct way. If your LED is not working, that is a definite possibility and you should look through that. So, and then we complete our circuit back into ground. And this is one of the three ground puts, ground inputs on the, on the Arduino. And if I play this, unable to blah, 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 blah. That's weird. Um, this would work, trust me. So if we were to just plug this in, you should try this on your Arduino and you will get, um, you should get a nice little glow from your, uh, from your LED. So this gives us a nice steady output, but now I want us to actually start programming these two LEDs to go back and forth. And this is where we have our final wiring for this. It works just like we had the five volts going out here. But instead, we have these different numbers right here. And these are the Arduino's pins. And we could program these to output electrical signal when we want. So this I have connected into 13. 13 goes into the breadboard, up the LED, and down into the LED through the 330 ohm resistor. And now you can see I've connected into this rail, because this rail goes back into ground. All of these are now grounds. And I don't strictly need to do that. I, I have grounds to work with, but it's a good habit just to get into so that you're being more efficient with your pins. 
So I have 113 going out there, up there into the 330 ohm resistor, and then back in the ground. And then I have out of pin 12 goes up there through the anode of the LED, back in the 330 ohm resistor, and back in the ground. And so I'm going to get our wiring all set up. And once you have done that, let's actually start programming. So you are going to need the Arduino IDE. If you just Google Arduino, it should come up. And where would it be? Yeah, the Arduino IDE. And try it now. Download it somewhere for whatever operating system that you are using. Get it all installed. And I already have it there. So let me go here. So this is the main kind of programming environment that we are going to be using for our Arduino. And we need to do a couple things. We have this void setup area, which is where we set up all of our pins. And then we have this void loop area where we program our pins to do things. So in void setup, I want to say what the pin mode is. These digital pins, they could be inputs and they could be outputs. Right now, because we are telling the pins to um, output a signal to the LED, they are going to be outputs, but we will deal with inputs very shortly. So I just do 13 and then in all caps, I write output and then I put a semicolon at the end. The syntax needs to be exact or it will not work. These need to be all caps. You need your semicolon. That needs to be a capital M. Uh, you, um, you will mess these things up all the time. Um, I still mess these things up all the time. Uh, but if something doesn't look right, they will give you a little warning and check those things right there. So we set up pin mode 13 for the output. Now let's set up 12 for the output. Okay, and so I have set these two pins up. They are ready to be programmed as outputs. Now I'm gonna go into this void loop section. And um, so the, uh, the two sections here, they're opened and closed by these curly braces. So this opening curly brace right here, see it's kind of sets the whole thing up. And then this thing right here, it closes it. Same thing with this void loop. This opens the void loop section and this closes the void loop section. So if I were to verify this, make sure everything's good, that's all good. But if I were to do it outside, like it's not in the void setup, it's not in anything, if I were to verify that, Arduino's gonna say, you're doing something wrong, man, what's wrong? I'm gonna, I don't like that orange, there we go. Okay, so now I want to write, I, I wanna turn one LED on, then I want to wait, I want to turn the LED off, then turn the other one on, then wait a bit, and then turn that LED off. So this is really just two commands here, turn an LED on and off and wait. So to turn the LED on, I want to go digital, right? And then the pin that I want to turn on, and then if I want to be high or low. So this will just turn that on. And as we're programming, it's a good idea to like go steadily and test one thing out at a time. So you can see like we did this first to make sure that we had this circuit working and you want to make sure your circuit is working, your LED is working. You know how that works first before you go on to the programming. And just like we are doing this one step at a time, we want to make sure that this programming is working, just turning this pin 13 high. So I am going to upload this and if I upload it correctly, what it should do is that it should just turn one of the lights on and do nothing else. So I'm gonna go up to this tool section and I'm gonna make sure that everything is set up for how I need it. I have an Arduino Uno and you have all the different types of boards here. So you probably have an Uno, but if it's something else, select it. And then I need to make sure that my port is connected into the right one. So you have this like Bluetooth option. That's, that's not what you wanna select. Uh, you want to Find the one, the USB modem, blah, blah, blah. It says Arduino right there and make sure that is selected. People forget this all the time. Once you have done that, this little button right here will upload it. It will compile it, check that everything is good, and then it will upload. And you can see that my light is turned on just like I wanted it to. So I'm gonna take another step here and I am going to wait a bit and then I'm gonna turn it off. So I am going to delay. That is how you wait in Arduino language. And I need to tell it how many milliseconds I want it to wait. 
and a millis there are a thousand milliseconds in one second. So if I were to wait 1000 milliseconds, that would be one second. And then I am going to turn the pin off digital, right? And just like before, this is 13 high. We are going to turn this to 13 low. And now this will loop over and over again. So if I were to leave this program like it is and upload it, it would never seem like it's going low because it just instantaneously goes back up here and turns high. So I need to delay this by one, thousand, uh, by, uh, by one second, 1,000 milliseconds. And now it will turn on, wait a second, turn off, wait a second. So let's try this, upload it. And you can see it's blinking back and forth. Now let's get this so that we turn 12 on. I'm gonna go back here and digital right this time we're gonna do 12 and then high. Make sure you have those semicolons and digital right. I spelled something wrong. You can see that's the cool thing about having a syntax highlighting with the coloring. Uh, see how this is black? and the rest of these are orange, that should be an immediate red flag that I did something wrong. And digit TL is not a word. So I'm gonna delete All right, that. And now I wanna turn 12. Wow. All right, and yeah, that should work. Upload this guy. And you can see it's going back and forth. And it's a little slow for what I wanted, so let me try 300 milliseconds. You could fiddle around with this, get it however you want. Oh, that's back and forth now. Cool. And so fiddle around, you could add, you could definitely add more LEDs. You can get a little whole array going there, doing whatever you want. You can make it go quicker, slower, but fiddle around with these LEDs, get um, get comfortable. And uh, that's it for our first Arduino tutorial. And in our next one, we are going to learn how to use inputs to control the output. So hope that was helpful with this one and have a good one later.